it's John from What Up, and welcome back to another video. Now, this is a conjecture video, so I'm going to take some facts and some circumstantial evidence, and then I'm going to mash them all together, and I'm going to come to some conclusions of my own. So, uh, later on in the video, when I start doing all of the I think, I'm going to give you a spoiler warning because uh, even a broken clock is right twice a day, and if I happen to be right about any of these things I'm going to talk about, I don't want to ruin your real time experience. So, there's that. Now, what are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about Layla Abera and Helena Westerman. Now, it's kind of a controversial subject with Wheel of Time fans, insofar that it's a big, big change from the original story. Now, Brandon Sanderson has gone on record and said that in the first few scripts that he read, there were big changes, uh, a couple of big changes, that may not sit well with the readers. Now, he didn't say viewers, he said readers. Uh, but he said that he understands the need for the changes. So, um, this, I think, could be one of those changes. So, let's talk a little bit about Helena first, then we'll talk about Layla Abera and where all of that came from. Now, who is Helena Westerman? Well, she's a British-born actress uh, that's been acting since 2012, uh, and she got her foundation degree in acting in 2014 from the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art. So she is a trained actress. That's her trade. That's what she does. Uh, she has done a lot of stage and musical work, which may be why you haven't seen her in much, because unless you're local and you can see her in those productions... It's, it's hard to see her, although she does have a showreel on her website, as well as a whole bunch of videos, clips of her online. So you, you can actually look and see what she's done for acting. Now, if you go to her IMDb, it lists her as only doing something called Quota, which is a short film from 2017. It's a fantasy film about the Tooth Fairy trying to fill the quota. Now, I watched it, and it's interesting, uh, and, and she doesn't do a bad job in it at all. Uh, so... I would go more with her stage acting, though. <laughs> so for someone so young, she has a lot of gravitas, and she is a very good actress. Um, so she doesn't have a whole lot of experience when it comes to television or movies, um, but she does have a lot of experience acting, and she is a good actress. So again, it goes in the vein of Amazon potentially hiring, I'm, I'm saying potentially because they haven't confirmed this, hiring actors and actresses who may not have a lot of experience but are good at their job. Uh, so, the Emmons Field 5, so you're looking at uh, Nine Eve Egwene, Perrin, Matt, uh, Rand, all of them uh, are not super well-known actors or actresses. Some of them don't have much experience at all. Some of them have more, uh, but all of them are good at their job. They're all good actors and actresses, so Helena kind of fits in with that. Now, we're going to talk about how Helena was tied to the Wheel of Time production. So, her agency sent out this tweet so sending all our love to the wonderful new client helena westerman who is on set shooting her first tv show watch this space and then gets her twitter handle now this was last fall um, this was sent out around the same time that she was commenting on a lot of wheel of time posts uh, in particular the table read where she's talking about the other women and she's liked a lot of posts and things like that now that alone doesn't mean much. That's 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 pretty far-fetched to assume from those two little pieces of evidence that she's involved in the show. Maybe she's just a big fan. Maybe she uh, is friends with some of the actors and actresses, which we'll get into here in a second. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe. We don't know for sure. But what we do know at this point is that she got her first TV show, landed her first big TV show because her talent agency was happy about it and tweeted about it. Then she's commenting on a bunch of Wheel of Time on Prime posts. So that's what we got so far. And we got this. So Red, Annie, Red Annie and Intelligence, uh, which is a website that deals mainly with The Witcher, but they do breaking news for a bunch of other things, including Wheel of Time, and they've actually got a bunch of scoops so far. And as far as I know, they haven't been wrong yet. Uh, not everything they've leaked or talked about has been confirmed, but a lot of their leaks have been confirmed. Natty and Abel Cawthon. They were released as a leak uh, the same day that Layla Abera was released as a leak by Red Annie Intelligence. The exact same day, same article, actually. Um, and so Juliet Howland and Christopher Sharuf, um, again, I'm sorry, sir, if I butchered your name. I'm terrible at names. Um, they were listed as Natty and Abel, and then later on Wheel of Time and Prime confirmed that, and the actors and actresses themselves have also confirmed it, and they've talked about it a few times. Uh, so Red Indian Intelligence was right there. They've been writing about a bunch of other stuff, and they billed Helena Westerman as Layla Abera. Not only did they get a hold of that, but her CV online at the time listed this. 2020 Television, Layla Abera, The Wheel of Time, Amazon Studios, Sony Pictures, Television Studios, Uda Breezewitz. Now, Uda is directing the first couple episodes, so that would mean that she is in the beginning 
of the series. Uh, and there's no reason to doubt this CV. Uh, actors and actresses generally don't lie like this on their CVs when they're public because they're going to get caught. They just do, and then it's not good for their careers. After the Red Enemy Intelligence post came out and people were talking about it, her CV changed to this. 2020 Television Actress Confidential Amazon Series. You go to Am uh, her IMDb, it says the same thing. So that's... Uh, that's more evidence that she's playing Layla Baron. In fact, I think that's a smoking gun. I would go so far at this point to say is she is playing that character. All right, then we have her in Prague. So she was in Prague twice last year, once in November, 22nd and 23rd, and again in December 2nd to the 5th-ish. I mean, it's a little gray area when she left. We're not entirely sure. Now, on the 23rd of November, she posted... Uh, some pictures of her at a party with some friends. Madeline Madden, who plays Egwene, also posted one of those pictures to her story on Instagram. Um, so that's not entirely 100% confirmation that she was out with the cast or the crew, because um, it, it sort of looked like a birthday party with just friends, and none of the cast were in the pictures. But if Madeline Madden's posting some of Helena's pictures, it kind of makes sense that maybe she was there and she took the pictures, or maybe... Me Maybe she's friends with her. Maybe, maybe, maybe. We don't know 100%. It's just another little tie-in to her with the cast from the Wheel of Time show. Now, Wheel of Time cast has been very, very careful about their Instagram posts, about their Twitter posts, about all that other stuff, because people like us, we, we take any little bit of news and we dig right into it. So it could be just them being careful, not saying much more than that. Uh, but it, Madeline Madden did post some of Helena's pictures, pictures of her with her friends. So there's that. So we have all of this evidence to support the fact that she is playing a character in the show named Layla Abera. So now we're going to get into the hows and the, the whys and what it could be. So before we do that, spoiler warning, in the rest of the video I'm going to be talking about and speculating on who Layla Abera is and how she fits into the story. So if you haven't read the, at least the first book of the Wheel of Time, The Eye of the World, up to chapter 10, be forewarned because I may ruin some things for you. Also, if I'm right in any of my conjectures, I may ruin parts of the show for you. So be forewarned about that. All right, let's get on to the rest of the video. All right, welcome back to the rest of the video. <laughs> so from here on out, like I said, it's all conjecture. It's my own thoughts. If some of this is true, I do apologize uh, if it ruins something for you. Uh, although I'll be pretty excited if some of it's true because it's, it's what I think. Um, so, let's get into this. Uh, I've left a link to an article down below in the description box. Click at your own risk, and I'm saying that because the publication bounding into comments, comics is not exactly a super trustworthy source for basically anything. Now, if you look them up online and, and vet them, uh, they tend to use a lot of language that shocks people, that uh, brings attention to their articles. Uh, they usually falsify some facts, although they are right sometimes as well. So uh, some of their articles are correct and completely factual and written really well. Some of their articles uh, have shock value terms in them and they, they have some political leanings and sometimes they have misinformation as well. So take this article that I'm going to talk about with a massive chunk of salt, like a big one, a big chunk of salt, not just a grain, but a big one. Um, this article cites a source, and that source is close to the production that let Bounding Into Comics know that there is one massive change at the beginning of The Wheel of Time in the very first episode, where Perrin is married, he has a wife named Layla Abera, she works the forge alongside him, and they're quite happy. Then, when the Trollocs attack the town, um, they attack the forge, and they fight side by side. Perrin, in a rage of bloodlust, kills one Trolloc, turns around and whips his axe into what he thinks is a second Trolloc, and it ends up being Layla, and he kills her. And that crushes him, completely, like, ruins him. And that is his major reason for leaving the Two Rivers, because he can't be there anymore, because that's where his wife died and where she was. Now... If that's the case, if they do that, it is a major shift from the story. Now in the story, Perrin leaves the two rivers with Matt and Rand and Moraine and Lan and Egwene uh, and Tom because he's of a certain age and he's seen the Black Riders like Matt and Rand. That's the only reason he's left. Now he gets the axe from uh, the blacksmith because he made it they made it years ago. Uh, a merchant's guard wouldn't wouldn't pay the proper price for it. Uh, they caught Perrin practicing with it, so they gave him the axe. So that's where he gets his axe. So he has the axe that way, uh, and he leaves to protect his friends and family because he thinks that he could be a danger to them. Now, 
in the book series, when you read the books, it makes a lot of sense. It flows really well. It's great. Um, however, for a television series, for people who haven't read the series before and have no attachment to these characters previously, it is a little weak. Um, because, again, it's one of those things that may not translate well to screen because you see a lot of inner monologues and how they're thinking and stuff in the books uh, and they're really conflicted and they need to leave. You're not going to see that in the show. They have to show things um, so that the reader can visualize and see it uh, on screen instead of just reading it. So I can understand why that could be a change. Um, I'm not super in love with that type of change. But again, if it's done well and if it makes sense for the show and the and what they're doing, 100% uh, I'll roll with it and, and I'll probably enjoy it. Like I said before, this is an adaptation. I expect major changes. And again, Brandon Sanderson said there's going to be some major changes. Um, but again, he's read it. Uh, uh, Robert Jordan's widow, Harriet, uh, is involved. Brave Jenkins is amazing. Sarah Nakamura is there to make sure things uh, don't go off the rails. I have full confidence in the team there. So if they make some major changes, it's going to be for the good of the show and the story to make it make more sense for the screen. Because I do agree that Perrin needs something. He needs something else to, to push him out the door and leave Emma's field. Uh, just just thinking he might be dangerous may not be enough. So that's that, that's one theory, and that kind of went everywhere. Uh, it's supported a smidge by uh, a passage in The, the Shadow Rising. I, I think it's chapter 32, correct me if I'm wrong, where they go to the Alcine farm and uh, Perrin sees Layla and he comments that he used to date her uh, and it, it was a girl that he would have married one day. So there's that. That's the only mention of a Layla in, in the books that has any ties to Perrin. Um, now there's another theory. Now this theory didn't come from an article or a source or anything like that. It's just the fans talking and I like this one a bit better. Um, it's the fact that Perrin is adopted and that the Aberas adopted him, took him in, because he was also born outside the Two Rivers, like Rand. Uh, so it gives him more of a reason to leave, a more of a push out the door, because he's worried that he may be the one the Dark One is after, because he's not from there. Just like Rand. So there's that. And if they do that, if he is adopted, he, if, if, if Layla is his sister, they can show her in the first episode, all teary-eyed when he leaves, what have you, or, or with his sister, you know, being happy and, and then upset that he's leaving. Um, but he's protecting his adopted family. Now, I really like that because it fits Perrin's character a lot more than him going into a berserker rage and killing some Trollocs and then killing his wife by accident. Um, yeah, you, you see you see berserker Perrin later on, eventually, uh, but he is so mild-mannered and so calm at the beginning of the books, it takes him a very long time to build up to that type of character. Uh, for him to do like that right away would be a little strange. So I like the idea of him being adopted by the Iberas and him leaving to protect his family. That makes more sense to me. All right, so that's that's the two bits of conjecture I have for who uh, Layla could be in, in the series. Um, I'm pretty convinced that Helena Westman is playing her regardless. Uh, so that that's, that's my thoughts on that. I'm conflicted on how she fits in. So we have the, the, the bounding into comics article again not a super reputable source uh when it comes to articles and stuff sometimes they're wrong uh and then we have uh the fan theories where he's adopted which i like a lot more and it makes more sense to me doesn't mean that if amazon does the first thing that they can't make it make sense but i have to see it because I, I can't really wrap my head around that part of it just yet all right so if you have any other ideas who Layla Abera could be or who Helena Westerman is playing, um, I'll throw one more thing out to you before we end the video. There's also a, a fan theory that she's not playing Layla Abera at all. Layla Abera is a placeholder name and she's actually playing Elaine. Now, I don't like that as much because Kate Franz is pegged as my Elaine in my head 100%. I did a video on that not so long ago. Um, but Helena does have the look of Elaine. Uh, she has the strawberry blonde hair and the blue eyes. Um, it's also a possibility, and Elaine only shows up once in the first book. Uh, and if they if they stay that way for this first season, that makes sense. I guess I guess we'll find out eventually at some point when they they release the Tracan castings, which haven't happened yet. <laughs> so I'm still I'm still want to help with the Gowan uh, reveal. So uh, 
you know, push that, retweet it on Twitter, or talk about it on Instagram, let Wheel of Time and Prime know that John from What Up wants something to do with this. Uh, so there's that. That's my last little plug. So let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, if you like the video, click the like button. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I put out videos uh, that are news related. I put out videos that are explained. So we talk about things about the Wheel of Time series. And I put out speculation videos like this one about the TV show. So if you like this sort of content, subscribe to the channel. I usually put out a couple of videos a week. All right. Thanks so much for sticking with me here to the end. And here's to many more.